Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. In today's video, we or I will be discussing a company that has seen its share price drop over the past three or four trading days. And in fact, today on the 19th of October, I am recording this video just after close. Uh, the share price at one point was down 8% on no news. And the other really intriguing thing is that the uh, volume coming in has been quite high. No reason behind this uh, this short sell-off because the company has released no market or price sensitive news since August. This could be just some uh, fund manager of the company selling out of their position. Uh, that's all it could be. But with this drop in the share price of the company right now, the value of Fiducian Financial Services is looking really interesting right now at a share price of about $6. Now, Fiducian Financial Services obviously uh, is all about financial services. And some of the things they do include funds management, financial planning, corporate services, and platform administration. So let's talk about Fiducian, Fiducian Financial Services financial year 22 results and why I think the value right now is really intriguing. For those who do like this uh, series, Financial Year 22 Results series, these are the five next, next companies I will be featuring in this series, including Seek, Babcor, ProMedicus, BHP, and Reliance Worldwide Corporation. If you do have a company you would like me to uh, do a Financial Year 22 Results video on, just leave um, your company within the comments section of this video, and I'll see if it fits in fits into my criteria. At this point in time, I am looking for companies that are at least profitable, that have growing revenue, not necessarily the growing revenue, but those are my preferences for companies I want to do in this particular video. So leave any video, any recommendation in the comment section of this video. Before we move any further on Fiducian, I'm not sure why I'm finding it hard to say Fiducian, Fiducian, Financial Services, how would I quantify or quantify, yeah, qualify? How would I qualify the quality of this company? And this is a very important step for me as an investor. Um, now, just because I might consider a company low quality doesn't mean I won't take a position in that company because if the trend in the share price looks really good and the sentiment behind the company is pretty good as well, I might take advantage of that and take a short to medium term position in that low quality company. On the other hand, if a company is high quality, I'm more than likely going to own that company or want to own that company for the long term. And I do consider Fiducian Financial Services to be in the high quality area. Now, what they do is not necessarily a moat, so they don't have a significant financial or competitive advantage. But this company has been growing at a consistent rate over the past five to seven years. And I think that has this company has a chance to continue that growth over that time period or the next five or seven years. Anyway, so I would consider Fiducian Financial Services to be a high quality company. So for high quality companies, the next thing I look for is the current valuation. Do I think the company is overvalued or undervalued? So because I think Fiducian is a high quality company, I'm more interested in the current valuation than the share price trend. Now in saying that, usually, Typically, ideally, high quality companies will have the sort of chart you want. And that is share price going from the bottom left to the top right. And we actually see that with Fiducian Financial Services. And when I say you want to see the share price going from the bottom left to the top right, I'm talking about the long term, not like the last few weeks or so, because that's just short term news or uh, noise. And in fact, we have seen that with Fiducian share price over the past few months. But this is the long-term chart for the company going back to 2015. Share price back then was actually under $2. Now the share price is around $6. So a nice little three-bagger over a seven-month period. But definitely the share price has been moving up with time. In fact, there is a bit of an uptrend line and or uptrend here. And I've displayed that by that dashed line. And any time the share price gets near that dashed line or under it, either the valuation of this company should be coming attractive because there's a little bit of negative sentiment in the overall market, hence why the share price actually fell through this trend line for a short period of time. 
um, because there was overall negative sentiment at that point. And other times we've seen it go um, towards the bottom of this trend line uh, in the end of 2018. That was a general sell-off in the market. Uh, if you do remember, remember the last about four or five months of 2018, we were at the point where it did look like we could have been heading into a bear market. That did not come to fruition because the Fed in America decided to lower their interest rates instead of raising them. And right now, Fiducian Financial Services is right on or just below that trend line. So this means there could be some value in this company right now. So I'm going to explore that question during the rest of this video. Now onto the financial year 22 results for Fiducian. That's the whole motivation for me doing this video today. And before we have a look at revenue, profit, and operating cash flow, what is the current markup of the company? Well, at a share price of $6, and the share price actually did drop 35 cents today on the 19th of October. At one point, it was down to the share price was down to about $5.80. I'm not sure again why there was a sell off today and high volume. We'll have a look at the volume maybe when we look at the daily chart. But at $6, the market cap of this company is $189 million. So this company doesn't have, doesn't have a lot of shares on issue. In fact, about 33 or so. And shares on issue has actually been dropping over the past seven years. So this company has not been doing any. Couple raisings. And that's another thing I do look for in a high quality company is the lack of any significant amount of capital raisings. Now onto the financial year 22 results for the company. Revenue 69.5, and that's growing. We'll have a look at the growth in revenue in the next slide. Profit 13.3 million, and that's growing. Uh, operating cash flow 16.9 million, and that's growing. And at a share price, uh, well, not a share price, with a profit of $13.3 million and about uh, 33 million odd shares in the issue. The earnings per share for this company is 42.2 cents. So straight away, you can compare the share price, $6, to the earnings per share, 42.2. And straight away, you can see that the P-E ratio of this company is quite low, not quite uh, near 10, but not much above 10, uh, definitely lower than 15. So at this point in time, with a P-E ratio of between 10 and 15, without me even calculating the P-E ratio, you could argue or straight away argue there might be some value in this company. But again, that's not the end of the journey in determining if this company is undervalued or possibly it might be even overvalued. So let's continue that journey now. One of the ways I determine the quality of a company is just look at revenue growth over time. Now, this is not the only thing you should look at. There's other things you need to look at, including whether the company is operating cash flow, positive, profitable. I prefer high quality companies to be at least profitable. The other thing I look for is margins. And one of the things I do look for is companies that have at least uh, level margins. So I'm talking about gross margins, operating margins. If I see operating margins or gross margins dropping, that could be a red flag. So on this particular slide, I've included Fiducian's revenue, operating cash flow, profit, and operating margins since 2011. Now, this company did go through some sort of restructure in about 2014 or 15, maybe it was even 2016. So between 2011 and about 2015, revenue was going sideways. And then all of a sudden, uh, from 2015, we started to see, well, this company started to see the revenue climb at a fairly consistent rate. In fact, revenue has increased from 26 million in 2015 to almost 70 million in financial year 22. Not only has this company seen their revenue grow at a consistent rate over the past seven years, the same is true for the uh, income, which is profit and the operating cash flow. Both of those have been growing at a fairly consistent rate. You could argue both of those have been accelerating in the last few years. The other thing is operating margins have increased slightly over the past seven or eight years, but they're sort of level um, around about, we'll say between about 27% and 30%. I don't want to see operating margins, gross margins falling uh, in the future. That would be a negative sign, as I mentioned before. And the last thing I did was just calculate the compound annual growth rate on a per share basis of fiducian in three different periods, 10-year period, five-year period, and three-year period. Ideally, I want to see at least 10% growth in all three, but I don't want to see too high growth. That's the other thing I am looking for. So Fiducian, over the past 10 years, has seen their revenue grow at 11.9%. Last five years, 10.2%. The last three years, 12.5%. So this company is sitting just above what I want to see for a high-quality company. So this is another reason. All these little factors are all the reasons why I do consider Fiducian Group 
to be a high quality company, even though it has a market cap of less than 200 million, you could argue, I could argue that there's a much higher chance, a really high chance that the valuation of this company will be significantly higher in another five to 10 years. Now, I'll just briefly touch upon one of the financial statements the company did provide. That is the statement of cash flows. This is all I'm going to look at. I'm not even going to look at note 29, which is a reconciliation of operating activities to profit. And there is a slight difference between the two. But the main reason there is a difference between profit and operating cash flow is just depreciation amortization. The main things I'm looking for here is increasing receipts. We already know through revenue they're increasing, or more than likely they will increase. Operating cash flow, has that increased from last year? It has. And is there any unusual things in investing and financing activities? And to be honest with you, for this company, the financial statements look pretty good. Nothing to really worry about as a shareholder of this company. This particular slide, segment reporting, came from the company's presentation, not their financial report. But I like this sort of information because they've broken down the revenue and the profit in each segment so we can see which segment or how the segments are performing individually. And there's a couple of reasons I like to look at this sort of information. The first reason or I like to look at this is I want to see if any of the revenue is concentrated in one segment or division. And for fiduciary financial services, it is not. I won't say it's evenly split, but there's definitely not one segment that is doing better than the others. Uh, but funds management has $27.4 million of revenue. Financial planning, 234 and platform administration, 18.5. Now that's revenue from external customers. They've also got one little bit here called inter-segment sales and all of corporate services uh, revenue comes from that. And so that's sort of from revenue is from the other segment. So I'm gonna ignore inter-segment sales for now and also corporate services because when you look at the revenue for corporate services, 11.5 million, but that uh, divisional segment was actually unprofitable, a loss making by 6.4 million, which is actually a little bit interesting. Now let's have focus on the other three segments. Now, once I've gone through the revenue, the next thing I'm look, look at is the quality of revenue for each segment. So I'm just comparing the profit to the revenue. And my definition of high quality revenue is those revenue with higher margins. So those revenue with really low margins would be low quality revenue. So for instance, financial planning by far has the lowest quality revenue here. So they had total segment revenue of 22.3 million and only profit of $3 million. So pretty low margins for that division or segment. But funds management had pretty good or high quality revenue segment revenue of 21.7 million and profit of 14.4 million. But by far, the highest quality revenue was found in platform administration. So again, highest quality revenue means higher margins. Platform administration had $14.1 million of total segment revenue and profit of 12.2 million. So you could argue, and I definitely could argue this, that fiduciary financial services maybe should concentrate on increasing their revenue in that uh, segment platform administration, because if they sort of concentrate on increasing the business, the customers in that area, the my overall margins in this business would increase. And that would have a really good effect on the profitability of this company overall. Now onto the valuation metrics for fiduciary financial services. So I was gonna say planning there for a second, but financial services. So the whole point of this video is determining whether this company looks pretty good on a valuation basis. So I've already said the valuation right now of Fiduciary Financial Services does look intriguing. This is based off the P ratio of 14.2. Now, I'm not really going to concentrate on the price to sales ratio. I sometimes use the price to sales ratio as a gauge towards the quality of a revenue. But a lot of times I already know the quality of revenue in a company. For instance, a mining services company has really low price to sales ratio. And the reason behind that is because their revenue is low quality, very low margins in that sector. And the price to operating cash flow for fiduciary financial services is 11.2. That does seem fairly low. The next thing I did for fiduciary, and I do, did do this for every single company in this series, is I calculate the reverse DCF 
Um, and the reason I do this is I just want to see what the growth rate right now has to be for this company to justify the current valuation. And we get a 4.3% growth in operating cash flow. And remember, revenue has been growing at 10% or higher than 10% per year over the past 10 years. And if this company can at least maintain the current margins, but if they increase the current margins and they increase or keep that uh, growth in revenue constant at higher, just higher than 10% per year, that means more than likely the operating cash flow will be increasing at at least 10% per year. So to justify the current valuation, all we need Fidushin to do is grow their operating cash flow at 4.3% per year. And I think it's highly likely this company will do exactly that. Something else I do is to determine whether there might be some value in a company is just compare the valuation metrics right now to what you might expect for the company over the long-term period. So in this slide, I'm looking at the price to operating cash flow of Fidushin over the past five years since 2017. And right now, the price operating cash flow, just less than 11. Not often in the past have we seen a price operating cash flow this low for the company. The only time we had seen it drop below 11 was back during the COVID-19 financial panic. And previous to that, we did see the operating price operating cash flow drop to 11 during the December 2018. And remember that sell-off in the market during that period. And that was really the last time we had seen, we have seen price operating cash flow of this company drop to these levels. So this is another argument that the value of this company is looking really interesting. And when I say interesting, I mean, it does look like it could be good value at these current prices. Now to the daily chart for Fiducian. And if I did not think Fiducian Financial Services was, was a high quality company, I'm pretty sure I said that right. If I did not think Fiducian Financial Services was a high quality company, the trend in the share price right now would be important because the trend is looking pretty nasty right now. Share price has dropped from a high of $9 back in October of last year, all the way down to $6. So share price has dropped 6 or 33% in the past yeah, year, past year, exactly one year. But the really interesting thing around about around Fiducian Financial Services has been the share price and volume action over the last five trading days. As the share price has moved towards that long-term trend, remember, when we looked at the weekly chart, there was that long-term trend. I kept that trend in this particular slide. You can see that long-term trend is around about $6.10 now. And today, on the 19th of October, the share price at one point had dropped about 8%, all the way down to $5.80. So that was just below the long-term trend. And there was massive volume. So if you look at the volume today, it is significantly higher than what we have seen in the last year and three months. So there was a lot of selling today. So, and we actually saw a lot of selling about three trading days ago, higher volume than we've seen the last year. So a lot of volume in the last four trading days, and we have not seen any changes in substantial holdings, but I'm thinking there could be um, someone out there who had a large holding in this company who has been unloading their shares, and that's why we have seen a share price drop. But just based on valuation reasons, I think this could be a good time. If you are interested in taking a position in this company for the long term, right now could be a good time to take a hold or take a holding in this company. That's all I have for this look at Fiducian, Fiducian Financial Services, Financial Year 22 results, and having a look at the current valuation of this company. And again, I think right now at a share price of $6 and a market cap of less than 190 million, there is intriguing value. There might be some value here if you are willing to take a long-term position for this company. So if you have any thoughts about Fiducian Financial Services or any other company on the ASX, if you think I'm completely wrong about this company and you think it is completely um, overvalued. Love to hear your opinion, particularly if it is contrary to my own thoughts. So leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, um, go seek someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.